hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jemima today i'm going to talk about another highly requested topic in fact if i tell you the number of emails that i received strongly requesting that i do this video you'll be shocked so guys i have i have i have come through for you as usual today i'm going to be discussing my mock question paper <laughs> yes <laughs> i know i know i know just you know grab your seats sit tight and well then of course i'm just going to tell you guys the questions that i was asked how you're supposed to answer the questions so i'm going to talk about every single question paper anatomy physiology biochemistry even the practicals so i will start from anatomy in this video the next video i'm going to upload i will talk about biochemistry and then the practical so this is a series that you should not miss at all so if you've not subscribed to my channel and this is the first time that you're seeing my face just hit that subscribe button and please remember to turn on the notification bell if at all you subscribe but you've not turned on that notification bell if i upload a new video youtube will not notify you so please just turn on that notification bell so that you will not miss any of my future uploads plenty talk okay for number four we were asked about the visual pathway so for visual pathway when you ask pathways like this make sure you include an introduction very very important introduce the visual pathway. what is the function of this pathway then and um, so another some other little little things that you should if you can even define the visual pathway that, that would be very nice you define the pathway when you finish with that you draw a diagram draw a diagram of the pathway every pathway has its diagram i shouldn't i don't need to start preaching to you again about the importance of diagram in anatomy you've watched my video on how to answer questions in anatomy so that shouldn't be an issue after that then you make sure you know there are different stages i be different phases or different steps or different areas in which they they synapsing there's relaying there's relay at different parts like for example the optic nerve crosses over at the optic chiasma you take note of this and at these different stages there are headings like for example optic nerve is a heading optic chiasma is a heading optic tract is a heading the lateral geniculate body is a heading optic radiation all these things there are different headings and you take note of like this optic nerve where does it originate how does it originate what is its cause as it leaves the orbit which canal does it leave the orbit through what are the different structures around it as it leaves the orbit these are little things that you should take note of okay you've told us that it crosses over which fibers is it all the fibers of the optic nerve that crosses over at the optic chiasma no so take note of the exact kind of the exact fibers that crosses over and the exact fiber that do not cross over that continues those are little things that you should take note of then um when you finish writing about that clinical anatomy very important then of course i forgot to mention the order of neurons first order neuron second order neuron third order neuron take note of that and include them under the appropriate headings where do these first order neuron um, continue what do they they form you know the first order neuron forms the optic nerve you are on under the heading optic nerve you include there and they are made up of the first order neurons then number five a were asked on squamous epithelium so when you see questions like this squamous epithelium don't just write oh it's a flat cell sitting on this membrane and you expect them to give you your mark you see these five marks for you to have up to three over five in anatomy that means you have written your whole life so <laughs> then if you even aiming for a 60 percent or, or a distinction then you have to write well enough for you to get four over five so for squamous epithelium introduction generally you know it's a flat cell and some other little things that you can mention on that introduction then diagram very important when you draw diagram then you classify it you know there's simple squamous there's stratified squamous under the stratified squamous there's keratinized there's non-keratinized why are you calling it simple squamous why are you calling it stratified squamous right? why are you calling it um, non-keratinized why are you calling it keratinized add those notes under these headings under the headings of the classification take note of the functions take note of where they are found very important histology i just love histology because it's just straightforward no plenty story shaky now then if you can draw diagrams of each of these classifications that would be also very nice then b we ask about duodenum so for duodenum you know 
you are supposed to write introduction where it's found in the function that's it then you draw diagram and whatever diagram you're drawing about this duodenum should have the layers of the duodenum then after drawing the diagram you now move into the different layers you know there's mucosa submucosa muscularis externa serosa so all these layers write them as headings they under the headings talk about key histological features that you would find in each of these layers like the mucosa you know it has the epithelium the line epithelium when you talk about the line epithelium you know a simple columnar include it this script of libacum include it this lamina propria include it those are little things that you should include when you're talking about all these different steps then submucosa you can't write about submucosa of duodenum without talking about the submucosa gland which is Brunner's glands distinctive histology of whatever structure you have asked like i was asked of of, of duodenum take note of that then muscularis externa even uh, uh, muscularis mucosa they are different orientation of the muscle fiber inner circular outer longitudinal include it those are tiny tiny things that you add here and there if you can I, I can even add the functions of it like Brunner's gland what is its function you know like um, Meissner's plexus Albert's plexus those are little you know tiny tiny things that you can add to beef up whatever you have written number six we were asked about the anatomy of femoral triangle so for something like this like I've told you already if all this talk that I'm talking you don't understand it please go and watch the video where I talked about how to answer histology questions I'll put the link up for you guys go and watch it so that all this talk that I just finished talking now you will understand it then number six we were asked about the cross anatomy of femoral triangle so for this introduction very important where it's found its shape you know it's wet shape just little, little things that you should I don't assume that the lecturer knows it when you're writing anything in exam write like as if you are teaching the examiner okay so you start from introduction draw the diagram and whatever di diagram you're drawing it should at least show the borders if you can let you show the floor if you can also let you show the content very 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 important then when you finish writing about that you now write about the borders the roof the floor the apex the base those are little things that you should take note of if you were asked about the femoral triangle then when you finish writing about that you now write the content of this triangle and when you write about content there's femoral sheet there's femoral canal add a note on these things and after writing about the content you now write about clinical anatomy and you know something like femoral canal and be femoral triangle now the examiner wants to see you write about femoral hernia not that if you don't write it you will lose mark but there are certain things that examiners expect of you so you just add it there talk about the femoral hernia under clinical anatomy unfortunately this video is very long so i won't be able to upload today so next week okay don't worry i'm here for you i have the paper here I mean, see anatomy on my own is like my best best course anytime i'm talking an about anatomy i'm always so enthusiastic so i guess that's why this video is so long if there's anything i missed <laughs> please just especially my bosses that are watching this video just put the add the notes or if there's any correction at all add it in the comment section i'll be very very happy to read your comments and reply to your comments as well i hope this video has helped one or two persons i'm sure it has <laughs> judging by the volume of emails that i received requesting to do this particular video i'm sure that it has helped a lot of people so please subscribe to my channel if you like this content give this video a thumbs up please like this video if it helped you at all and if you've subscribed at all please put on that notification bell so that youtube will notify you when i upload a new video i remain your girl jemima see you next week bye